Hey what's up everybody, TrophyNet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with, but today we're going to do a different kind of video. If you've watched some of my videos, you might know that I'm not the biggest fan of the Nilfgaardian faction, and I wanted to finally explain why exactly, since my hatred has only deepened since. Let's start with a little trip down memory lane. Originally, Nilfgaard had about three major archetypes. Locking, Spying and Reveal. From the very first moment I've hated Locking. Locking countered everything that had an active effect and as a result it countered a lot of strategies in one go. At the time there were also very little means of dealing with locks. You could clear it only with Mahakam Ale or Aguara if I recall correctly. So any more than that and you were out of options to get rid of the lock. Pair that with the absolute biggest party pooper of the bunch, the Usurper, the only leading ability that automatically locks your opponent's leading ability without any way to bring it back, and you got the most toxic faction in the game from the start. Unintended. Spying decks and reveal decks on the other hand were very fun and interesting since they played around with both deck and board configurations, keeping you on your toes. Enter Homecoming. Reveal got hit the hardest by the changes in Homecoming. Instead of being able to reveal cards in your opponent's hand, providing you with information, Reveal is now random from the deck and doesn't permanently keep that card visible. It's basically become a randomizer where both Spotters, Yennefer and Triss just pull a random card from either deck and boost or damage using the power of the revealed unit. It's incredibly hit or miss. Some of the supporting cards are still there, but with the change to Morvron's leader ability, Reveal as an archetype is basically dead and gone. Spying is basically gone as an archetype as well. There's just not enough support for it anymore to make it anywhere close to viable. Which leaves Locking, which was largely untouched until a few months later with the introduction of Purify. Since then, Locking turned more into part of the toolset instead of being a specific viable archetype. These original archetypes were however replaced by a few new ones. Tactics, Soldiers and Assimilate. Soldiers are pretty straightforward. They're just units marked with a specific soldier category, but there are a few units that actually interact with soldiers specifically, providing some backup for the archetype. Vrigev triggers the deployability of adjacent soldiers, Vreemde boosts all copies of an allied soldier by two, and Ramon Tirconel spawns and plays an extra armored copy of a bronze soldier from your hand. Some decent support for what basically amounts to a simple tag, especially with a relatively decent addition of the Art Fane crossbowmen, who deal one random damage whenever you play another soldier. The soldier's archetype fits the armed might of the Nilfgaardian Empire like a glove and can further be bolstered by Morvan's new ability, Imperial Formation, giving you four charges to boost an allied unit by two. So far, so good. Tactics are next. They're just a Nilfgaardian tag for special cards, but they thematically fit Nilfgaard as well. There's some solid support for it, with Skellen allowing you to play one twice, Mena Kuhorn allows you to play one from your deck, and the Fire Scorpion and Hefty Helge gain charges do deal damage every time you play a tactic card. Tactics are also tied to Ardal's original leader ability, Enslave, allowing you to seize an enemy unit based on the amount of tactics in your starting deck. Seizing is in my mind part of Nilfgaard's problem, but let's talk about the last archetype first, Assimilate. Assimilate is an ability that boosts a unit by its Assimilate value every time you play a card that was not in your starting deck. It is my favorite archetype in the Nilfgaard faction, but sadly hasn't been the most viable in ranked play. It also fits Nilfgaard thematically since, as the game puts it, Nilfgaard can use any other faction's strength against him. Assimilate is one of the most fun archetypes to play with because you need to adapt your strategy to your opponent since half of the time you are playing their cards to try and get the upper hands. This also means you need to be super knowledgeable about the other factions to use your options strategically at all times. Even the related leader ability links back to that since you can copy a card from your opponent's hand with double cross. So all fun and games, but why is this video called the problem with Nilfgaard then you might ask? To me, it comes down to three things. The lack of identity in the faction, seasonal modes, and of course, poison. The lack of identity is a result of both removing the very interesting spying and reveal archetypes and focusing the faction more on stealing and copying the units of their opponent. This muddles the water since, as we established, a lot of cards in Nilfgaard are focused on either seizing units or playing cards from your opponent's faction. This automatically means you lose your identity as a faction, since all you do is copy your opponent. 
Thematically, yes, Nilfgaard has been known to infiltrate and turn people over, but by focusing so much of the faction on this mechanic, it drained it from its other strengths. Bringing back some more support for the spying archetype and restoring the reveal mechanic would help to solidify Nilfgaard's reputation of a faction that is perfect to gather information from your opponent and infiltrating their ranks. Thronebreaker, for example, had some really cool spy card effects that could easily be modified to fit into the new Nilfgaard. So simply put, Nilfgaard has a bit of an identity crisis, but I think by restoring spies and reveals to their former glory, it would be getting that back. The bigger problem, however, is the effect of some specific cards in Nilfgaard on seasonal modes. Despite having lost some of its identity, Nilfgaard also has the biggest variation in its toolset. It's the only faction with a leader ability that disables their opponent's leader ability, and at the same time the only one that has a card that can enable or refresh it to be used again. Damien. It also has Leto Kingslayer, who can transform into a 5 power version of any card on the battlefield. K here boosts himself by any boost your opponent gains, basically negating any boosts that happen on the other side, and is the faction with the most cards that can wipe out a single unit without any required setup or prerequisite. In ranked play this is usually not a problem, but it's a different story in seasonal. Because of Assimilate and the wide toolset, Nilfgaard is the ideal faction to abuse any of the custom rules CDPR can come up with. The current Season of Love, for example, is countered easily by Assimilate, allowing you to play a copy of any unit your opponent plays, seizing it instantly. You don't even need to think about it while you're playing, just copy, seize and repeat. The last season, Season of the Wolf, also favored Nilfgaard since it has the most Witchers, but it was probably one of the least egregious examples. The season before that, however, was as toxic as things could get. The Season of the Wild Hunt changed the rules so that you would spawn a 1 power copy of any unit you played. Playing Damien meant that you would be able to play 3 of them in one go if you used Strategic Withdrawal to replay him. On your next turn you would then have up to 3 more times you could replay him because you could keep refreshing your leader ability. Combine this with multiple K-Hears to negate any boost your opponent gained, something which also greatly benefits players during Season of the Wolf by the way, and Vilgeforts who allows you to destroy any opposing unit without setup and you would almost always win. You were basically out of luck if you wanted to play seasonal and have some fun at that time because that's what Nilfgaard counters as well. Fun. It drains the fun out of everything. And I can promise you that whatever rule set we'll get in the next season, Nilfgaard will be ideal to play with again and again. Which brings us to the final problem. Poison. Poison single-handedly solidified Nilfgaard as the no-fun faction for me. It just breaks everything. And since Merchants of Ophir, it is basically uncounterable by anything other than a swarm deck. Before Merchants of Ophir, Poison was a small tool to use, but not really viable since there wasn't enough support for it. Squiatel could even do it more than Nilfgaard at that time. But the latest expansion changed all of that. From the 6 poison options we had before in Nilfgaard, we now went to 14, up to 16 or higher if you replay Masquerade Ball or can copy any poison options from your opponent. Combined with a bevy of status-based support cards such as the Thirsty Dame and Vincent and Philippe van Morlehem, poison became a strong and basically unblockable archetype. To elaborate, I have nothing against Poison as a mechanic on its own. It needs two turns to set up and only destroys when you hit your target twice in a row. But providing this many options to use it breaks it completely. The only ways to counter Poison are consuming, which creates a bigger unit which can then be poisoned and destroyed anyway, setting up a defender which can be purified or destroyed with Poison as well, or purify the Poison away. Purify is the biggest problem here. It is not nearly as prevalent as Poison is, and the only faction with a good amount of purifiers is, you guessed it, Nilfgaard itself. The game even recognizes this. Of the 7 matches I played to record footage for this episode, 3 were against Nilfgaard itself. It just is its own best counter, and that's a problem. Even as Nilfgaard, you eventually run out of purifiers, and with Masquerade Ball, Morale, and multiple leading abilities, you even have multiple ways to play Poison twice in one turn making it unblockable. We need more tools against it if it stays this prevalent, because right now it is just annoying to play against. Something of a team in Nilfgaard. So either give us more purify options or reduce the number of poisoners. Right now the balance is just completely off. 
I often call Nilfgaard the party pooper faction, and Poison just made this even worse. Let's start by winning matches again by using fun combos and strategies, instead of just nuking your opponents every play. But that's are just my thoughts on Nilfgaard. I'm very interested to hear in what you all have to say. Do you like Nilfgaard? What improvements do you see in the faction? And I'm also really curious to see how much you play Nilfgaard compared to the other factions. Statistically, Nilfgaard deck related Gwent videos are always the most popular, which is also confirmed by my fellow YouTubers, but I'm really curious to know why, because personally I don't see the appeal. Let's discuss down in the comment section because I'm really really looking for more opinions on this. Thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you all in the next episode of Gwent Edge. So uh, thank you and goodbye. See you next time.